the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the the gauge and cell here. We're going to open up this alcohol wipe pad and clean this area. Now that we just let that dry. Okay. So on this gauge and cell, you can see that there's there's like a support in the middle to strengthen that. We're going to use that as the dead center that we're going to try to center this on. So I'm probably going to do this a little bit different than the instructions say. I'm still going to keep this together because they say we can use this hole to help line everything up. And so their instructions say that the back of this, the back of the mount, should end up an eighth inch from this edge. If we lay this down on its face, we're going to end up pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line this up on here, get it where I think that it's, it's perfect. Now I'm going to take this tape, this blue painter's tape, I'm going to mark these edges. Be just for the simple fact of this primer can leave a kind of mark on the plastic. This also will give me a reference for where it sits when I'm done here. Okay. I just so when I put this on I don't want to go any further past that so it doesn't leave any other marks on it we're gonna apply this it's 3m primer 94 this primer 94 that we're gonna put on here is a one-time use so once you break this you got to use it and they're asking for a, a thin uniform coating so once this is on then we need to wait five minutes for this properly to prime the surface. Now that's done. That can be thrown away. Well, it's been a little over five minutes so now surprisingly this thing is sitting nice and flat so if we hold this down I'm gonna put this up here and I'm just gonna set it here and put it right on once I have it lined up the next thing is gonna be take your fingernail and rub this tape that activates the tape. This isn't something that they mention in their instructions or anything. This is just from prior knowledge of using these these tapes. If you rub it, it activates the adhesive. Okay. Now let's get this off. Okay. Now it ended up just a little bit further back, but it almost lines up perfect with the front there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to put this clamp on here. Any added pressure that you can give to it is going to help it adhere better. So there's enough room to get these clamps in there. We just want this thing to seat on here nice. So there's no chance of it moving. So now this here, the instructions for that VHB adhesive is 
at room temperature it'll see it'll achieve uh, 50 percent of the ultimate strength uh, 90 percent after 24 hours and 100 percent after 72 hours so after 20 minutes of this clamp like this I'm going to take this this gauge and cell I'll put it back on the road glide now it said for people that are using the amps system or for Zumo users you want to put these in here prior to putting that on I'm putting them in, in there anyways because what I want might need them in the future so better off just to put them in there right now there's there's no downside to it now we are going to put a little bit of thread locker on these tiny screws. Now it says to tighten these snugly. We'll, this is pretty small and we'll just get them as tight as we can. We're ready to mount this to the the nacelle on the bike. Let's go do that now. You know, you could lean this back depending on where you want it. You could have it up like that. <clears throat> I'm just gonna tighten it up so it's at the angle of the of the gauges. That is our Iron Aces Speed Shop mount. This is for the Rushmore Road Glide, so this will fit anywhere from 15 to 19. Uh, the ones that they have for street glides will fit 14 to 19. And they do have the, the years prior to that also. So. so this mount, in my opinion, is the sexiest way to mount your phone, GPS, or whatever you want to your bike. Not a fan of all the half-ass mounting solutions, like the $10 imitation RAM mount that they sell on Amazon that you clamp to your handlebars. Or even using the perch style mount that Harley-Davidson chooses to use. Because on my 2013, I used one of the genuine Harley mounts. I'll put it up here. And that thing shook worse than a guy trying to drink a beer while running a jumping jack. I also didn't like that the way it mounted, it kind of blocked the controls if you wanted it turned sideways so it always had to sit straight up and down I didn't like that now keep in mind no matter what you use there will be some shake you can't get you're on a motorcycle but the way they engineer in just a small amount of interference keeps it nice and tight so when you tighten it down it's not going anywhere also it allows for adjustability while still stopping the large shake now, if you look at the quality and craftsmanship put into these pieces, a machinist or fabricator will know what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. It's billet machined aluminum. It's anodized black, a hard black. You can't, it's hard to scratch. And it's got a variety of mounting patterns. So, damn near anything you want will fit. This retails for, I think it's like $140. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to their website. But if you want to save a few dollars, they do have a sale. I think it's once or twice a year. Uh, I bought mine on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. 